All right, welcome to podcast 4.1, and this whole section is about the periodic table, at least it's an intro to the periodic table. Now, we're kind of familiar with um, the modern periodic table, the one we have, but let's talk about the history of it and where it came from. Uh, I've got a diagram here that shows you kind of a rough sketch of the first periodic table um, as it was made by this gentleman right here, Dmitry Mendeleev. Okay, and that was around 1869. Here's a picture of the man, the myth, the legend. And you can kind of see that uh, it doesn't really look like our periodic table, all right? Uh, but you can see that the rows kind of go this way, where, where, where we would go this way on the periodic table, the columns are going this way, all right? That's, that's one of the differences. But let's talk about what was such a big deal, because obviously the periodic table, you know, the, the scientists knew about elements, but the problem was there's just really no way to, um, that they were, they could come up with a way to organize them. And they were tried. There was a number of ways. But what Mendeleev did, and you're going to do this in a, an activity, is he took the known elements, uh, imagine him putting all their properties and atomic masses uh, on a card, and then he tried to organize them based on their atomic masses and on their chemical properties. And at the time, some chemical properties of elements were known and the masses were known. And so he started to get uh, a table that had, you know, when you started putting them into columns, um, the properties started to kind of repeat. And what I mean by that is, is if I look at this line right here, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, it's not a very straight line. Those all started to, to uh, kind of repeat in, in, in a, a column this way. I should say a row, I'm sorry. And then the same thing with fluorine and chlorine and bromine, and he called it J at the time. So it turned out to be a very big deal. And um, <clears throat> what happened is there were a few places where he didn't know about elements that... Uh, he thought there should be elements there, but they, they weren't. And I guess you can see a couple examples here. This one right here, one right here. It should weigh 68, 70. You can see the question marks, um, some question marks about the masses there. So let's see, we have one more. I got a little bit too much. Uh, let's see. Here's another one over here. Uh, didn't know. Okay. What he did is he said, we don't. we have not discovered these elements yet. But when we do discover these elements, uh, they're going to have these properties. And uh, that, of course, was um, a very big deal. And when his periodic table was finally uh, accepted as the mean, it was because some of those elements weren't discovered. For example, uh, the element gallium. L L I. Um, gallium, he predicted that it would have a density of about 6.0 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, when they found it, it actually had like 5.96 grams per cubic centimeter, so he's very close. He said that the melting point for this unknown element would be very low. Well, gallium has a melting point of 30 degrees Celsius, which is just above room temperature. Uh, he said when the oxide was formed, it would have a formula of something like this, Ea2O3. Um, now that Ea stands for like Eka aluminum, he, and Eka meant like the next one. I'm not too good on that, I, I don't know for sure. But when they discovered the oxide of gallium, it was Ga2O3. So these, this is what he predicted right here, okay, this, this, this column right here. Boy, that is just some horrible writing. Um, he predicted this row right here, okay, and this is the actual, okay, so you can see he was very close, and so that was the case for, uh, gallium, uh, indium, let's see, this is, this is gallium, indium, and I think, uh, germanium, I think, were the three that he, he didn't know of, so that was a big deal, and that, of course, meant that, hey, there must be something in this periodic table, however, there was a slight glitch, um, if you look at on your periodic table, let's see if I have an example. Um, you know what? I don't. Okay, we're going to have to do something here. All right, so let's let's look up at the periodic table. Now, 
Mendeleev went by atomic weights. He did not go by atomic mass. Now, at the time, uh, the idea of the proton wasn't really around yet. So he had two issues. If you look at iodine right here at a mass of 126.9, and you look at tellurium um, with 127.6, that's a problem because it should go, the atomic weight is going up every time because that's what he was doing. But he knew that from his look at looking at the properties that iodine belonged in this column he knew that and so that was a problem that he really couldn't explain it didn't make sense but he knew that iodine should be in this column right here and uh that was just going to be an exception to his rule so the next step and i think let's see look over here if we can see it see how he's got tellurium here with a question mark and so he knew that was that was a problem with uh, that element because uh, 127, which was J, which I'm imagining must be iodine, um, those were messed up, and so he wasn't really sure what was going on there. Okay? So then the, the, the next step, about 40 years later, a guy by the name of Henry Mosley started looking at the X-ray spectrum lines of each of the elements. Now, as you remember from our spectra, every element has a ver its very own spectra. And what he was finding, that as he looked, along the periodic table, he was noticing that the spectrum lines were kind of corresponding to the atomic number and not the atomic mass. And so that was a little switch that he did. So Mosley was the guy that said, you know what, the elements need to be uh, organized according to their atomic number, which is how they are today, and not the atomic mass. So what this uh, led us to is the periodic law, all right? And the periodic law just basically states that um, if you arrange the elements according to their atomic number, elements with similar properties appear at regular intervals. And by that, we mean down the column, all right? Down the column. That's our regular interval. This group all acts the same. 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 Let's not worry about this middle section yet, although they have similar properties and the same with this. But, but for, for our purposes, um, the periodic law says when you go ahead and organize these by atomic number, which we do, you will get those similar properties at regular intervals. right? And there is a reason for that. And the reason for that has to do with the valence electrons. Now, when we did electron configuration, we talked about the outer electrons, and we might even have used the term valence electrons, but those valence electrons, that's really where all the chemistry is taking place. And those are the electrons in the atom's outermost energy level, the S and P block. And if you recall from your periodic table, this is the S block here, this is the P block, this is the D block, and this is the F block, right? So those in the S and the P are our valence electrons. So for example, if I was talking about an element right here with uh, 2P3, which happens to be carbon, okay? And if I wanted to know how many valence electrons, it's all those in the S's and the P's. Well, we have 2 in the S, 1, 2, and then we have 3 in the P. So it has 5 valence electrons. Okay. If I wanted to talk about the element fluorine, which is right here, okay, how many valence electrons does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it has seven valence electrons, All right? And so on and so on. Uh, if you're talking about this element right here, boron, okay, how many valence electrons? One, two. Now, I'm doing this all along the second period, but it doesn't matter what we do. Let's take an element in the fifth period. What about this one right here? Okay. Well, that has how many valence electrons? One and two. So those valence electrons are those in the outermost energy level, the S and P's, and that's where a lot of the chemistry is taking place. All right. And let's see. We, I think I've got one more thing here. Um, oh, yeah, since this is our periodic table. I guess I should have done this before, but let's look at this. Okay. The groups of the periodic table are those uh, going down. Okay. Sometime we will call these family. 
Okay, those are the families. You'll hear me refer to that a lot. And then the period, as I already said in the last slide, is the horizontal rows. Okay, so we're talking about what the periods, we're talking about this way. Okay, and if, if you remember from us uh, writing on a periodic table, we had 1 through 7. Okay, so that's the periodic table. Periods, groups this way. How many groups are there? Happens to be 18 groups. And um, that's just our little intro to the periodic table. Starts with uh, Mendeleev coming up with the idea. The important things that he did is he is he organized them by their properties and their mass. Then he found uh, he left some gaps. They were later discovered. That really proved that his idea was was correct. Then the next guy, Mosley, came along and found that uh, he should organize elements by increasing atomic number. All right, that gave us the periodic law that when you arrange them according to the atomic numbers, you'll get similar properties. Then we have valence electrons, groups, and periods. So there you go, quick and dirty podcast. Uh, hope it makes sense. If there's anything, any questions you have about this, please ask. See you next time.